Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Chris, this is Stylus Meets Vinyl, welcome back. Uh, I've got a little bit of a vinyl finds to show you guys today. I've really cooled off on uh, my vinyl discoveries over the last month or more. Um, if you look back in some, some of my videos, I had some really good vinyl finds back in April, back in May. The last video I did was June, which was my thrift store and yard sale finds. I was really active and I found a lot of good stuff at like the record show, thrift store, yard sales. And you know, it can kind of, you can kind of get hot and cold. Sometimes you're, you're really, you're really striking with the, with the gold, you know, and um, you go to a thrift store and you always have to set your expectations low because very rarely do you find anything good. I had some really nice thrift store finds, some really nice yard sale finds. And then I had so many records that I just needed some time to actually like listen to them. I had to clean them up, sleeve them, listen to them, really appreciate it. Instead of just, you know, you don't want to always just be buying records. You want to just uh, take them in and appreciate them. So that's what I've been doing. My last, as I said, my last Vinyl Finds video was back in June. So I'm definitely due. And unfortunately, this one's a little small. Um, I did a little bit of thrifting, didn't have that much luck, but I got some things here and there. So let me uh, jump right into it here, okay? So first one I'm gonna show you is The Doors, LA Woman. This was, um, I found this through a contact of mine. There was a woman who had bought a collection and uh, my friend told me about them and I went and checked it out. And um, unfortunately, I think the collection had been picked over a little bit by some people but there were a couple of good finds in there. This was one of them. It's in okay condition. Um, I'd probably like a little bit of a cleaner copy, but this one's not bad. It's, it's, it's a good play copy for now. Um, this is the last Doors album that they released with uh, Jim Morrison before he passed away in 1971. This was released in April 1971, and three months later, Jim Morrison would be found dead in a Paris bathtub. Um, Morrison sounds great on here. This is a really nice kind of stripped down bluesy album from The Doors. They got a little bit with, um, shoot, I can't remember the name of their, this is their sixth. The one before this was Morrison Hotel. The one before that was, um, I think Waiting for the Sun, was like they had some brass and some horns and it was a little bit um, extra. This one's a bit more stripped down, bluesy, back to their roots and um, some really nice tracks on here. The Changeling, the album opens with, which is quite nice. Love Her Madly, um, LA Woman, the title track obviously, and then there's a Cars Hiss By My Window, which is um, a, a bluesy, a slower bluesy song that I think was recorded live in the studio because you can kind of hear them sort of jamming and riffing and talking a little bit. Uh, that one's quite nice. I like On Side 2, The Hyacinth House, and then you've got Riders on the Storm, which the album ends with, which was the last recording that Morrison ever laid down before he passed away. So, as I say, this was released in April 1971, The Doors, LA Woman, quite nice. Next up, okay, so this is from the same place that I got LA Woman. It was, as I said, this woman who had bought a collection and um, I went in and I found this one, Black Sabbath, volume four. I got pretty excited. Um, I took a look at it, <clears throat> it was okay condition, but uh, you know what? As I said, um, sometimes you get really hot with these thrift store and yard sale finds and then sometimes you get cold and I think I had so many good thrift store and yard sale finds in the last few months that I was sort of due to uh, maybe just uh, even even things out, level the playing field a little bit. And this was one of those situations. So I bought the record, took it home. And as soon as I pulled it out and showed it to my girlfriend, she looked at it and she was like, oh, it's it's warped. And it's not even that easy to find. Like, I can't even find it here. Um, but, yeah, it's warped uh, just on the end. And, of course, it does not play. Uh, yeah, actually, it's right up here. You can you can barely even tell. But um, it does not play. Uh, at least it skips the first one or two tracks on both sides, which uh, makes it virtually unplayable. And um, as I said, it was a bit of a humbling moment. And the funny thing is, I made a video months back about um, being sold warped records and kind of 
how to spot them and to investigate records and you know take them to a window and like look around and just really check and I didn't even follow my own advice with this one so I got burned um, this is this will basically go in the trash pile uh, and my search will continue for um, Black Sabbath volume 4 so that was a little bit of a bust uh, when you think about what I paid for those records they weren't in that great of condition however this next one is a success story. Now, there's uh, what's kind of really great about you know being in the vinyl community is now that I have people that are commenting on my videos and I'm engage engaging in this discourse with them and we're chatting and they're making recommendations to me and, and we're just talking about music that we like and albums that we like. And I had um, a viewer, Frank, if you're listening to this, shout out to you, Frank. Um, we've been chatting just over the comments and He's a very experienced uh, record collector and um, you know, he always, uh, whenever I make a mistake in my video and say something wrong, he'll always give me a nice polite little correction about uh, what I got wrong, which I do appreciate. But um, one of the things Frank met, mentioned to me, I, uh, I had shown Yes album and Frank mentioned a band called Star Castle and that they had a debut album. This is it right here. And I was in a thrift shop and I ended up finding this copy. It was a blind buy just based on Frank's recommendation. And Frank told me that these guys are like a mix between Yes and Kansas. And I would definitely agree with that. I say you're, you're spot on with that, Frank. Um, in fact, I did a bit of reading about these guys. And so this is from 1976. The lead singer is Terry Luttrell, who was the the original lead singer of REO Speedwagon. He left REO Speedwagon and he created another band and then I think left that band and came here and joined Star Castle. And he released three or four albums with them. This was their debut album. And um, this album is good. It did receive a little bit of criticism for sounding a bit too much like Yes. And I can definitely see that. Um, but you know what? Like, if you like Yes, I think you'll like this one too. Um, definitely worth a listen. This is a nice, clean copy. I'd say it's very good plus or more. It does have a polyline sleeve that it came with. And this is on the Epic record label here. And uh, as I say, it's nice and clean. So that was a good find. Thank you so much, Frank. And... Um, you know, I got it at a thrift store, paid just about as much as I would really want to pay for like a blind buy like this, but um, it's 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 a good album. So, Star Castle, debut. Now, next up, this one, we've got Arcade Fire, Suburbs. This is an album from 2010. This is their third album. Um, this is probably my favorite Arcade Fire album. Um, this is like a loose a little bit of concept album. Um, they've said, the so the Butler, the Win and Will Butler were the uh, kind of brainchild of Arcade Fire. And they've said that this is like neither a love letter to nor an indictment of the suburbs, but it's like from the suburbs. So it's about their experience growing up in the suburbs uh, down in Houston when they grew up. And then um, Arcade Fire is also kind of half Canadian as well. They formed, I think, in Quebec. And uh, as I say, this is their third. This is a, um, so this won a Grammy for album of the year. It won a Brit award for like international album of the year. And then it also won the Pol Polaris prize, which is a Canadian prize for uh, Canadian music artists. And then it also won the Juno album of the year. Um, definitely, as I say, it's, it's, it's a very, very good album. One of my favorites, I'd say, um, so it's all about them kind of growing up in the suburbs. So there's a lot of influences of like what they were listening to. Um, they've called it a mix between Depeche Mode and Neil Young, which I don't know if I necessarily agree with. I don't disagree with it, but um, I would say there's some tracks on here. Like there's a song called Month of May. That's a little bit, I'd say like almost like punk influenced. And then um, there's a track called um, The Sprawl 2 which is sung by Regine Chassagne. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, but um, she is the wife of uh, Wynn Butler, and um, it's a really great track. I would say that one's kind of like Blondie. Like, it sounds a lot like bl a Blondie track. So you're getting a lot of influences from um, them growing up in the suburbs in, like, the late 80s and early 90s, maybe. Um, definitely worth, uh, worth a listen, if you don't already know it. And this was a great one. It's been on my list for a while, and I just was waiting to kind of pull the trigger on it. 
Okay, and then the last one I have for you is Pink Floyd, Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Um, this is their very first album. This is from 1967. Actually, uh, this album just had a birthday just yesterday, or August uh, 5th. Uh, their 55 year anniversary. Of course, this is the album with um, Sid Barrett. So no David Gilmore on here. And this is a very different album from what you might be used to hearing from Pink Floyd. Um, it's less prog. It's more, uh, this is pure like psychedelic album. It can be a difficult listen to if like, if you're expecting what you might know from Pink Floyd, but um, this is considered like uh, psychedelic, like one of the best psychedelic albums. Um, if you're into psych, uh, definitely worth a look. Um, this is a 2022 mono mix, and um, definitely uh, excited to add this into my collection of uh, Pink Floyd albums. So that's it guys, just a quick five albums there to show you, a couple of, um, trials and a uh, couple of errors with uh with my warped record there but you know what take it all in uh all in good faith and sometimes you win sometimes you lose and that's what record collecting is all about but i'm happy with the scores that i got i'm happy to listen to these a little bit more and add them into the collection so thank you guys so much for watching if you are so inclined give the uh, video a like consider subscribing and make sure you come right back here where stylus meets vinyl thanks see ya